Hi. Now in this video, what I want to do is show you some of the common circle properties that you should know if you're dealing with coordinate geometry for circles. And the first one we're going to look at is essentially that if you have a chord, something like this, and you take the center of the circle and you go from each end of the chord to the center of the circle. This angle here is called the angle subtended at the center from this chord. Then if we take this part of the circumference, in other words, an arc, let's just highlight that, and we go from one end of the chord out to this arc and back down again to the other end, then this angle up here is called the angle subtended from this chord on this arc. And there's a relationship between this angle and this angle. If we call this angle theta, it can be shown that this angle is twice the size. In other words, 2 theta. And it's this theorem that we use for this special case, because if we have a diameter of a circle, obviously a chord going through the center of our circle, then if we were to draw lines from the end of the chord to the part of the circumference up here, then this angle must be half the angle subtended at the center here. And we know the angle here, it's 180 degrees. So it means that the angle off here must be a right angle, 90 degrees. So quite often in coordinate geometry questions, if you show that you've got three points on the circumference of a circle, let's suppose that those three points were A, B and C. If you can show that the gradient of AB and the gradient of BC are perpendicular, remember the product of the gradient should come to negative one. If you get a case like that, then you know that AC must be the diameter. Okay, here's another one that you should be familiar with. And that is, if you've got a tangent to a circle, a line that just touches it at one point, say here, then the angle made by the radius to that point with the tangent is always 90 degrees. And you'll use this concept when you're trying to find the equation of a tangent to a circle, given the center and a point on the circumference. Because all you need to do is get the gradient of this line, and then you can get the perpendicular gradient for the tangent, just by using the fact that the product again of the gradients should equal negative one. And when you've got the gradient of the tangent, you already know this point, you'll be able to use the equation y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1 for finding the equation of this tangent. Another kind of question that's asked a lot in coordinate geometry for circles is that you're given, say, two chords. Let's mark in some chords again. We'll have this one here. You're given the coordinates, say, of the endpoints of the chord. And you've got another chord, for instance, say here to here. And you're given the n coordinates. And you're asked then to find out where the center of the circle is. Well, again, you should know that if you were to draw the perpendicular bisectors of each of your chords, they're going to intersect at the center. Because if you draw the perpendicular bisector to this chord, you end up with a diameter. And if you draw the perpendicular bisector of this chord, again, you end up with another diameter. And where those two diameters cross will obviously be the center of your circle. Okay, so I hope that's given you some idea then of some of these common properties that you might well need to call upon when you're dealing with coordinate geometry for circles. Okay.